Hi, I'm Brian Jackson. Today we have Jonathan Lister, the new country manager for LinkedIn Canada. He's the first person to fill this position and he's here to talk to us about LinkedIn's plans for this country. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Of course. So tell me, you used to be at Google Canada and I wonder if you can describe how it is that you came to be uh, with LinkedIn after working at Google. Sure, I mean, great question. So I'm probably pretty typical as a LinkedIn member, meaning that in my previous role I, was, I wasn't looking for work. 80% of members on LinkedIn are employed, and so I, I fit that description. When LinkedIn decided to build a Canadian office, the head of international uh, came to me via a contact that I had in the UK, came to me on LinkedIn and approached me about this opportunity. I gave him a list of potential candidates as he asked for. He came back to me and asked for more candidates. As we got talking, he told me more and more about LinkedIn, and to me it looked like a fantastic opportunity. So really that's how the, how the transition occurred. To me though, LinkedIn was a brilliant opportunity because it, it really is one of the, the highest growth opportunities that I saw anywhere. I mean, LinkedIn is growing extremely rapidly. There's say 75 million members globally. We had a, we had a member every second. Canada is growing very quickly, so lots and lots of growth potential. Changing a category, we're really changing the way careers are managed, the way people build a professional profile online, the way they connect with people online, the way they capture insights, capture data. We're changing all those things. So LinkedIn is really revolutionizing how careers are managed. So between the growth piece and kind of how uh, we're changing a category, to me those are really, really exciting things. So you were actually recruited from LinkedIn, like by using LinkedIn to work for LinkedIn. That's right. I was recruited. I was, I was recruited on LinkedIn to yeah. join LinkedIn. I guess that's the only way they would do it, right? Well, that's the way LinkedIn does it. I mean, we <laughs> we like to be able to go to our yeah. clients and customers and show that we have employees like myself and our, our head of PR who are both, you know, who came to LinkedIn through LinkedIn using the product. Okay. And how do you think that working for this social network? will be different from working for a search engine. I know that you're just two months on the job, but maybe you have some insights already. Yeah, it's, it's early days, but one, I think it's very high growth, which is one of the things that attracted me to it. I mean, it's, you know, Canadians are very engaged online, they're very engaged with LinkedIn, but at the same time, the, the, the business is growing very quickly. We have, we have three revenue streams, which is different from other uh, online businesses, social networks, and search engines. We have a, a revenue stream around hiring solutions, so recruiting people. We have a, a revenue stream around marketing or advertising, and we have a revenue stream around subscription-based business. So between those three things, I mean, they're, very, they're very different. So to me, what's exciting is being able to manage really a diverse set of revenue streams on a, on a, grow, on a, on a fast growing business in Canada. All right, and why do you think LinkedIn really needs that Canadian presence? That's a great question. Uh, it, you know, LinkedIn is growing globally. We've added a number of countries uh, to the LinkedIn family this year, the Netherlands, India, uh, Australia, and now Canada. And in each case, we find that there's differences, of course, different uh, nuances in each, in each country. One of the things we specifically want to do, though, is gather feedback from both members and customers. So, you know, uh, in recently I was approached by a CIO in Canada who said, look, my my employees have two kinds of, of profiles. They have their professional profile on my website and they have a LinkedIn profile. I would rather they just had a LinkedIn profile, but in order to do that, I need them to be able to you know, uh, document what they've published or articles that they've contributed to. So we went back to the product manager in California and we're making that change to, to the, the customer, pro the member profile. So that's an example of feedback that we gather from market. And that's gonna differ market to market and some of those things are gonna have global applicability. Mm -hmm. Okay. And talk about your own priorities for the LinkedIn office. Where do you want to take this? Yeah, yeah, great question. So I really have three priorities over the next six months. And you know, first is really educating the market, educating Canadians and educating businesses. Again, I think there's great awareness about LinkedIn. It's a great position to be in. But I don't think people really know the full extent of the things they can do on LinkedIn. They don't understand necessarily that you can of course, build a profile and make it very complete and really manage your professional identity. They don't necessarily understand that you can really, really build a, a robust and high quality professional network, a network of your peers online. And the third thing is they definitely don't understand that you can extract a lot of data. 
uh, from LinkedIn. You can extract data about what your your competitors are doing, you know, companies that you follow are doing, the kinds of products that companies are launching. That's really valuable information. And I think we see people now every day going to LinkedIn, LinkedIn and checking their 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 updates to gather this kind of valuable information. So all of those things are are happening now. I think that's that requires a fair bit of education. So one, we're educating the market. You know, two, we're finding local partners, and that's part of the feedback loop I talked about. We really want to have a good uh, breadth of local partners who will help us not only distribute the product um, in some cases, but also maybe uh, you know finding partners who can help us distribute our our mobile applications. Those things are important to us. Uh, so finding that good local partner network, and then three is of course capturing that feedback. If we want to get, we want to have good feedback from Canadian consumers and from businesses in Canada. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that, of course, you're on LinkedIn. Yeah. And uh, you, I just wonder, what other uh, social networks are you on? And do you use often? And how, how do you use them? Uh, again, I mostly use Twitter as a, as a broadcast medium, if you will. And uh, you know, it's part of my, 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 my stream at LinkedIn. When I have something that I want to communicate, I'll communicate it. Uh, through LinkedIn, and that will you know, communicate it through our Twitter feed. We'll, we'll communicate it to the Twitter audience. That's primarily used as a broadcast tool. I, mean, it's, I think it's incredibly valuable for broadcasting information. Okay. And how about Facebook? How do you use your Facebook account? You know, I'm, I use Facebook, but uh, I'm not as avid a social networker as I'm a professional <coughs> networker. To me, the stage I'm at in my life, I think like a lot of Canadians, I care a lot about my career. And I take that very seriously, so I, I primarily use uh, you know, LinkedIn to help manage that. So we're talking about other social networks here, and Apple, they just launched Ping, which is sort of a music-focused yep. social network built right into iTunes there. And personally, I'm a member of Google Buzz, um, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, other social networks that are more like in, uh, niche, right? Mm -hmm. And I just wonder, uh, is there a bit of social network overload now? Are Canadians being asked maybe to manage too many different identities? And how does LinkedIn approach that problem and try and compete for uh, the attention of social media users? Yeah, I think it is one of the biggest issues that Canadians and everybody faces is, is an information overload. Uh, I've touched a little bit on, on how LinkedIn addresses that. I mean, we think that uh, there is a big difference between the professional context and the personal context. and. LinkedIn plays only in that professional business, uh, professional business context. And maybe to draw an analogy, you know, if I was to tell you that I knew a place where, uh, if you're a marketer, I knew a place where you could find CEOs, and I knew a place where not only could you find them, but they'd be approachable, uh, and they'd have time on their hands. That would sound, that would sound pretty remarkable. I could give you that. Then, if I added one more data point and told you that place is Disneyland and they're standing in line with their kids, all of a sudden it changes the context. So to me that's what LinkedIn is about. LinkedIn is about finding professionals when they're in a professional frame of mind, when they want to talk about professional issues. That's the value, managing your career with other like-minded professionals. That's the difference of LinkedIn. Right? So while there are a lot of social networks, we play squarely in professional, uh, professional identities and professional brand building and you know that's where we excel and we think we're the best at it. So it's about trying to own that space, your Absolutely. professional identity online. Absolutely. Absolutely, and, and managing your entire career, you know, from the point where you're a student starting to build your personal, or your professional network, to the point where you, you know, are, are are in the middle of your career and you've got a really robust network, but it's high quality. It's not it's not about quantity. We don't need, you may not need, you know, thousands of, of people in your network, but you need, you know, uh, the right number of really high quality people who can help you further your career. I mean, we we want to make professionals more successful, and that's what we think we do best. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just to wrap up here, I wonder if you can tell us uh, what some small business owners might uh, expect to see in store for, from LinkedIn. What uh, is coming out next that might be of particular interest to that crowd? Well, we, you know, we're, we're, we think we're of great value to the small business community. And you asked why, in the previous question, you asked why uh, LinkedIn needed a Canadian presence, and small business is part of that answer, right? Three million businesses in Canada, probably half of whom have less than 50 employees, two and a half uh, million uh, owner-operated or, or sole proprietorships. So there's, there's a lot of small businesses in Canada. Mm -hmm. And one of the things LinkedIn does really, really well is offer that community, in effect, free products. I mean, there are, 
if I'm a if I'm a small business, I can't afford to go to the conferences I want to go to. Well, LinkedIn Groups helps you address that problem. It gives you a way to connect with a group of like-minded people on a topic that you're interested in, rather than you know pay the expense of flying around going to conferences. So there's a lot of ways on LinkedIn that as a small business I can get great information for free, as well as of course my marketing and and, and hiring people as well. So we think there's great. Uh, there's already great aptitude and great uh, products for small businesses on LinkedIn in Canada. Great. Well, I uh, want to thank you again for coming into our video studio yeah, and making uh, the time. Yeah, no, it's been a real pleasure. Thank okay. you. Good luck. Thank you. For ITBusiness.ca, I'm Brian Jackson.